Now, how can companies obtain some breeding space from relentless, relentless price and cost pressure? Well, that's the subject of a new book called Open Services Innovation, as by Henry Chesbro, and it tells what the book book is about and also how it can help your business. I'm joined in studio studio by Alan Jordan, sales director of Book Buzz. Morning, Alan. Morning, Ian. Um, many companies will say, look, we're under constant, constant pressure to update, to innovate, and to grow business, but we're just under attack all the time. How can you survive? That's right. And uh, Henry Cheesebro and a lot of his colleagues on innovation and the innovator's DNA and the innovator's solution and what we do about innovation have been trying to uh, address this in kind of academic uh, books for the last number of years. So while this is, is a little bit tough to read, there's a huge amount of value in it for anybody who's in business and needs to think up something new or is caught in what they call the commodity trap, which is you're focusing on price all the time and you can't do anything about value. The four things that uh, Cheesebro looks at in his open services innovation is that, look, think about your business, even if it's on the product side, as a services business, you've got to co-create with customers. And that's something that is really interesting around the whole public service. What does side. he mean about? What, what does he mean by that? Well, co-create actually. You've got to sit out with your customers and say, how, the service that we're designing does it meet your needs? So, in actual fact, do you know what it is? It's a fancy word for saying talk with your customers, get some information and feedback from them, and co-create also can be with your suppliers. So, do you know where you would tend to look at multinationals who would come in? The old style of procurement is really dying. You can't just bring in the suppliers, beat them up, give them the lowest price. You've actually start work with the suppliers to develop new products. So you've got to communicate with them in a type of a real partnership. The other two things are embrace open innovation. And what's open innovation? What does that mean? And that's back to, remember we did that book, What's Mine is Yours. It's collaborative consumption. It's actually dealing, talk with the customers, finding out what they want. And the last one then is they talk about transforming your business models. And to give you an idea of that, like for example, remember when Dell back in the 80s came out and, and Gateway had the yeah business to consumer direct what a fantastic model. Cut out the middleman, no retail, none of all the expense of the shops. What a brilliant model. But it failed spectacularly when Dell tried to come up with the product to counteract Apple's iPod because guess what? They would no retailers to go. So people couldn't sample the product, couldn't touch it, couldn't, couldn't feel it, so they had to withdraw it. So again, it's looking at your business models and it's all about trying to get into the services sector, which is now for most of the, the economies in the world is 60% of their GDP. Yeah, I suppose people always think that services are, you know, that the smaller part of the economy and think manufacturing is the bigger part, but services are so important. And that's, you look at companies like IBM and, and as you mentioned, Dell. Yeah, well, look, like what the book does, it takes some classic examples of the big organizations and how they've restructured from product to services. And the question it's posing, and it's trying to give a little toolkit for other businesses to say, do you know what, you can do this too if you get the parameters right. So, for example, IBM, like 20 years ago, they were in mainframes, they were selling laptops, now they're completely out of it. The bulk of the revenues are coming from services to their GBS division. Rank Xerox, remember Rank Xerox? So they were in the whole thing of, well, who can make the faster photocopier? How big is it? How many, you know, and, and, and people in offices had people who were trained to work the photocopier. In actual fact, you were a miracle worker if you were the person who knew how to work the photocopier. Now they went to manage services 20 years ago, whereby you pay for the price of a piece of paper that you produce. GE, I mean, I think the GE aviation is, is, aviation is a classic example. Here you are selling 30 million dollar engines, but no, they, they sell it as powered by the air. So when you use the engine for an hour, you only pay for that hour. And their whole model has, has changed around to supporting your business to do that. So what these guys are asking us, I just hold up, what these guys are asking us is both SMEs and businesses, and particularly the public sector, which is going to the biggest change program ever in the history of this state, what are you doing about innovation? And the problem with innovation, do you know what the problem with, with it is? It sounds like it's, it's people down in a little basement with alchemy and, and they're inventing things. And what this is trying to say, no, you've got to get that out of there. You've got to get it into the open and really start working with customers and suppliers if you want to be alive the next 10, 20 years. There are all huge companies and huge organizations, even the public sector. What about small companies? Yeah, you know what the interesting study is? Now, of course, with a lot of the business books that we review, a lot of it is coming from what's happening in America. We're trying to get more focus on the BRIC countries, Brazil, Russia, what's happening there as well. So the stats are only based on, on America. So if you look at their spend on R&D, because really that's what innovation is about. In the, the SME market in the U.S., so like an SME company has got about 1,000 employees, which would be our large employer here. But in 1981, they were spending 1.7 
billion on innovation or R&D. Now they're spending 64 billion. It's the same way on entrepreneurship, the schemes they have for supporting new business. So when you've got our existing government here looking how to support business and to create jobs, this is where a huge part of, of the, the money needs to go. So really, if you think about it, Ian, innovation is another word for R&D. And if you think about service businesses, you, you can see R&D in petrochemicals, the oil industry, pharmaceuticals, but you can't think, oh yeah, there's no R&D department for a service business. And what this book is really saying, well, why don't you have one? You need to have one. Okay, Alan Jordan, Sales Director of BookBuzz. Thank you very, very much for coming in this morning. That book, Open Services Innovation by Henry Chesper. We'll stick it on our website.